the Witch Queen introduced us to the Witness. The first time we've laid eyes on this character, but we've been under its influence for quite a long time actually. Stasis, Motes of Darkness, and Salvation in the Black Garden. This character is super important in Bungie's endgame for the Light and Darkness saga, and today we're going to take a look back and try and decode messages relayed to us by the Witness in plain sight. Welcome on in Guardians, hope you're having a great day. As mentioned, we are going to look back at various releases and pick out some cool connections to The Witness. Connections we always brushed off or vaguely connected to the overall darkness, but there may be much more going on under the surface. And there's probably a ton of these, so leave your own if you remember any in the comments below. Throughout Destiny 1, we knew about the darkness, but it was like, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We didn't really focus much on it throughout the first game's plot and even its expansions. In Destiny 2 though, after the Red War, we would slowly see the darkness plot creep up. When the Traveler unleashed its wave of light to defeat Gaul, the Pyramid Fleet was alerted. At first, it would appear that it was dormant, and then Savathun tells us that the Witness was sent away among the stars during the Collapse and then this is now when they have awakened. There were minor events like Dredge and Yor and certain Guardians becoming corrupted by darkness, so to speak, but Season of the Drifter really toyed with the idea of our Guardian testing out the ways of the dark. Drifter himself was a rogue light bearer, and he gave us a choice. We can choose his game of Gambit banking motes of darkness, following the goals of the Nine, or side with the light and the vanguard in Anur. Drifter was sort of like a precursor of using his light in different ways, not just for good, sometimes for bad, hence why he is given the term Rogue Light Bear, doing what he wants with it. There are things out in the dark that only the dark can overcome. Trust me. The next big test was in Shadowkeep. The pyramid inside our moon was left behind for some reason, and as the others would approach beyond the system, this one would beckon us to come closer to interact with these memories of the dark and the nightmares, and to learn the truth about these powers. In fact, when you think about it, every pyramid besides the one in Savathun's throne world belonging to Ralk was really just there to sway us to the dark side. It beckons us to come closer. Violence, beauty, truth. These things await inside. There's no turning back now. Welcome. We've been waiting. In light, there is only death. Come to us. Do not be afraid. In this pyramid, we also interact with a dark artifact. This right here is the device that allows us to commune with the darkness in the first place. So it was pretty clear at this point, the dark is bribing us to join its side, saying I'm much better than the light, I have more power, in the light there is only death, so join our side. And right after this, Eris would take up stasis. Also in Shadowkeep's ending in the Black Garden cutscene, we see a clone of ourselves speaking with pyramid ships hovering in the background. This may have been directly tied to the witness, in fact, if we take a look back at it. All of these voices speaking through the ghost may have been as well. Even the movements are the same. You made it. We 
We have heard your cries for help. And soon we will answer. Who are you? Don't you recognize us? We are not your friend. We are not your enemy. We are your salvation. In Season of the Arrivals, the whole plot was Eris and our guardian trying to speak to the darkness, but Savathun was intervening. Gazing back with the knowledge we now have, the witness wanted to speak its lies to us, but Savathun was trying to blind us from this, from the truth. In the conclusion though, we would kill Nakris, who was working for Savathun, and hear this broadcast from the darkness, that ancient power awaits us on Europa. Don't you see? It is as we once said. In light, there is only weakness, only failure, only death. But where the light takes, the dark gives. No longer will you be a pawn. No longer will you watch the lives of those you care for be lost. Remember, in darkness there is only strength, only victory. Only life. Ancient power awaits you on Europa. Beyond Light would yet again beckon us to enter the pyramid ship and actually acquire this power for ourselves. We would later learn that this power was within us this whole time, and that perhaps if we use it in the right way, it can actually help us. Okay, Barracks, that's two. Did you hear that? Sounded like voices. What? Who? The ones who spoke through me. We must hurry then. There's one more relay. Oh no. It's them. They're here. They're beckoning us. We've kept you waiting long enough. Come to us. Salvation awaits. The Light believes you thankless. Nothing more than a soldier asked again and again to do its bidding. So we want to thank you. With a gift. To help you finally take control. Look what I've done for you. No more Light. No more dark. Look within. Focus your power. Ooh. How interesting. The only thing we have to break here is you. Come then, Pawn. Show me what freedom has. So ever since the darkness was alerted or woke back up, the witness and its fleets that is, it's been tempting us to use the darkness. We know that the witness wants the final shape which could be nothing and destroying different species seems to accelerate that plan, recruiting the last among them to join his forces like he did Rolk in The Disciples. The witness could think, yeah, if I use the darkness, use these powers to just kill everything, maybe we get to that final shape faster. Now here's an interesting thought. We had our own speaker for the light. What if the witness is just that, but for the dark? We know light and dark can both be used for good and bad, but the entities behind them like the Guardians and the Black Fleet may bring about the end in the Final Shape expansion depending on the way they use these forces. 
Light is gifted by the Traveler. Darkness seems to be taken by those who have enough strength to wield it. Before we wrap this up, I wanted to throw in some other cool references found in the lore. I basically just went on Ishtar and threw in Witness, and from the results, I wanted to see if there was any coincidences here. So the first one is kind of a stretch, but Gaul says Witness in this final cutscene. Traveler, do you see me now? I am immortal. A god! You have failed! Witness the dawning of a new age! In the Callus, it's stared back card where he goes to the edge of the universe and interacts with something, he says this. At the edge of the universe, I stared into the infinite deep. It stared back and was pleased. I would become the herald of its victory and bear witness for all creation. And in Season of the Arrivals, this Shrieker was called Savathun's Witness, which could just mean the Shrieker looking out for Savathun like the one in Savathun's Song Strike, or what if it's more directly straight up tied to the Witness as we know Savathun knows who he and the Disciple of Ralk are. Anyway, Guardians, have any cool darkness stories of your own from the lore? Leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to see some other Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you, Guardians, in the next one.